Hi everybody, Ivan back here with uh, a brake fluid flush for a 2009 Porsche 911 Carrera S4. Uh, this is the uh, 997 second generation, so today we're going to do a brake fluid flush. I'm going to be very detailed in this process, hopefully, uh, so pardon me if I'm too basic, uh, but I'm going to try and go over as much as I can. So first things you're going to need in order to do this properly is uh, some brake fluid. Uh, this is a DOT4 brake fluid I'm using. There are a number of different varieties you can use. Uh, I like to use the ATA Type 200. Uh, they call this ATA Gold fluid. Uh, this has got a nice dry boiling point of 536 degrees uh, and 388 degrees as its wet boiling point. Uh, the difference, of just a, a little bit of background behind brake fluid, uh, brake fluid is hygroscopic. Uh, what that means is that it will eventually, over time, absorb moisture from the air. Uh, and as it absorbs moisture, it actually lowers the boiling point of the brake fluid. So for high performance driving, um, <clears throat> your brake fluids can boil if left unattended. Porsche recommends generally that you, you flush the brake fluid every two years. Uh, for those of you that track your cars, uh, it should be done, I would say, at least once a year, uh, if not before every track event that you run. A number of different fluids out there you can use. Uh, there is uh, ATE, there's also Castrol SRF, uh, which you know is supposedly the best brake fluid as it comes to a wet boiling point. Um, it might be a little bit of overkill for me, particularly at my level of driving at this point. So that's the first item you're going to need. Next thing you're going to need is an open-ended box wrench. Uh, the size that I use for my car that's required is an 11 millimeter. Uh, this one here has a little bit of a twist to it, which allows me to get into some tighter spots. You'll also need a short segment of tubing, and this is what you'll attach onto the brake bleeder valves in order to bleed the brake fluid out. And lastly, something that is a very handy item is this Motive Power Bleeder. Uh, what this does is it will allow you to pressurize the master cylinder, thereby pushing out the fluid through the bleeder valves. Uh, this allows you to do the job one, I guess, with one just one person, rather than having another person in the car pumping the brakes, which can, is another way to pump out the brake fluid. Two ways of doing uh, and using this power bleeder. Uh, first off, what you can do is you can fill the power bleeder with brake fluid, at which point you then purge out all the old fluid through this master cylinder or you can just use the air and then every now and then top up the master cylinder uh, and do it that way. That's the method that I prefer uh, simply because it, it avoids me having to clean the power bleeder itself. So uh, underneath here, this is your master cylinder. Uh, so the first step that you'd want to do is you want to unscrew the cap and the second is, there is a small screen here, which is really just a design to, to kind of remove any kind of particulate matter or just to screen any material or fluid as you're going through. So this is just a small filter. You want to pull this out. This just makes operating very easily. You'll also note that I have a towel here. It's very important that you avoid spilling brake fluid on any painted surface on your car because brake fluid will eat away at the paint on your car. If you do spill any, wipe it up and clean immediately. So the first step that you can do is you can you need want to evacuate all of the old brake fluid out of the reservoir. So in order to do so, there are two ways. You can either use a tur turkey baster and suck the fluid out until you get close to the very bottom. And the reason why I say close to the very bottom is you do not want to empty it completely because that could potentially allow air into the system. So there's a small hole at the bottom which leads into the brake lines. So you want to leave a very little bit at the end. The other way to evacuate out the fluid is to screw on the cap, pressurize it, and the way that you pressurize it is you would pump up the reservoir and you can see the pressure gauge right here beginning to rise. I like to get it up to about oh, 12 or so. So once you get it up to about 12, I'm not going to pump it all right now, you would release the brake bleeder valves on one of the wheels. So the first step would be to remove the wheel and you'd release a one of the, uh, you'd release the inner bleeder valve 
until this and continue to bleed fluid until this gets down low then you'd unscrew it which will release the pressure top it up with fresh fluid and at that point you're ready to begin your actual bleeding process okay so we're back here um, my apologies I'm uh, I'm actually already done with the rear wheels and now I'm actually doing the front wheel but the order that you would best bleed that and this is very important is you want to start bleeding at the wheel which is furthest from the master cylinder so we noticed that the master cylinder was on the front driver side so the order would be as follows your first wheel would be the rear passenger side wheel the next one would be the rear driver side wheel the third wheel that you would want to uh, bleed from is the passenger side front wheel and lastly you would do the driver side front wheel so I've already done, I'm already done with the rear driver side as well as the passenger side wheel and I'm going to show you the process now on the front passenger side wheel and the process is basically, well not basically, it's exactly the same on all four wheels in terms of how you would go about bleeding it. So if you'll notice here, we have an inner bleed valve as well as an outer. So for the inner bleed valve, there's a little rubber cap, you'd want to pop that rubber cap off at which point in time you'd want to use the uh, length of tubing that you have and put that onto the bleeder cap. I, I'm just using an old uh, container of brake fluid here as a, as a catch basin to catch the old fluid. And now you would use your 11 millimeter wrench right on this here and you'd want to turn it counterclockwise. And if you watch right here, you're going to see fluid start coming up through here. Here we go. You'll, you'll see the brake fluid begin. As you see, I just saw a little bubble out there. What some folks will actually do is they'll use a rubber mallet or a hockey puck and tap on the, on the brake caliper itself and that will oftentimes help release any bubbles that are stuck on the side of the caliper or on the inside of the tubing. That's really not doing a whole lot. But we're now bleeding brake fluid out. Some have recommended, uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly which the process is. I know that uh, there's some, some, some say it's better to start with the outer bleed valve and then the inner. Uh, personally, I don't think it makes all that much of a difference. Uh, the main thing is you're you're draining the majority of the fluid out of the first bleed valve and the second one you're not going to bleed nearly as much uh, fluid out because you're really only ble bleeding a very small section of fluid so this one you're going to be bleeding for a bit longer time and on the second valve you're just probably going to be bleeding it for about I would say 10 seconds or so we're just about done with this one as a general rule of thumb, the majority of your fluid is going to be used in the first bleed, meaning the rear passenger side wheel. Uh, because you're going to be draining the initial master cylinder reservoir, as well as that long length of line to do the rear passenger side wheel, a general rule of thumb is that that first wheel and master cylinder uh, refilling that master cylinder is going to take, I would say, about 500 mLs of fluid. The driver's side rear wheel, you should expect to purge about 200 to 250 mLs of fluid from that wheel. And then as you get to the fronts here, there's a much shorter distance between the master cylinder. So uh, if you're doing 500 and 250, that means you have about 125 mLs of fluid left to do the front driver side as well as the front passenger side wheels uh, because the amount of tubing or brake line that you have to purge is much shorter. If it's the first time you're ever doing this and you want to be a little bit on the safe side, uh, using a liter and a half uh, is probably more than enough. Uh, as you get the hang of it, one liter should be plenty in order to purge your system. Uh, ATA used to make uh, a product called ATA Super Blue where the brake fluid was actually blue so you would be able to see the color of the new fluid coming in. 
but uh, the DOT has recently made that uh, non-street legal, so the blue fluid is no longer available. But uh, that was a handy item to have uh, if you wanted to alternate between the blue and the gold to be able to tell when you were indeed getting the new fluid out. If your blank fluid's old, you'll also be able to see a color difference as the, the dirtier fluid starts to is in the beginning, and then once you start seeing the clear fluid come out, then it's very noticeable that uh, you, you've gotten to the new fluid already. So I hope that's helpful. So uh, I've already finished with the in, inner bleed valve, and now I'm going to proceed to do the outer bleed valve on the caliper. Uh, same exact process as before. Um, you might have a little bit better visibility, but again, you're just going to loosen this bleed valve a little bit, and then you'll see the fluid begin to purge. You actually saw a couple of bubbles pop out there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you really want to be very specific about this, some people recommend you can, you can give uh, the caliper a couple of light taps. What I'm using here is just a rubber hockey puck. You can also use a rubber mallet. And again, I'm just talking about very light taps. And sometimes if there's any bubbles that are stuck on the sides of the, uh, the, the brake lines, that might help release it a little bit. And again, if you've already done the inside, to do the outside, I would say about uh, five to seven seconds is all you need to be bleeding it. And fluid is indeed running here. You just cannot see it. It only fills up here. But if you actually look at the container itself, you'll see that fluid is indeed coming out. Okay. So to complete the process, what you'd want to do is you'd retighten the bleed valve screw until it's good and tight. You want to over tighten it and you'll notice that the and then what I like to do is get a towel and as you take this tubing off, fluid's going to want to run down. You really don't want to, you, know, you want to be able to clean that up immediately. So I'm pulling the tubing off, not letting it fling around. Because remember, brake fluid is very bad for your car's paint. Uh, so you do not want to get brake fluid on the, on the vehicle's paint at all. Uh, so once you've done that, I love what I do is you want to clean this area off in case there's any drips or spills of the brake fluid. Place the rubber cap, and that completes the process for bleeding the brakes on a Porsche 997. Thanks for watching, all.